Linda McGowan. Um, I'm a professor of applied health research at the School of Healthcare, University of Leeds. Um, my background, my clinical background is in nursing and midwifery, but all my academic background has been in psychology. So I have a psychology degree, a master's degree in health technology assessment and a PhD in health psychology. Um, I've also had various leadership roles in the university over the past few years. Um, and the last one was to be Pro Dean International for the Faculty of Medicine and Health which was the first time I visited UMS in 2019. Um, so I currently have a visiting professorship at Onissa University in Georgia Carter because I started to work with that university first through our PhD students. And then from that, um, through another PhD student, Vanami Yulian, who's recently achieved her PhD, um, I developed a relationship with uh, UMS. I just want to say something before I talk about uh, the University of Leeds in general, um, just something about you know, where we're situated uh, as a university um, within the world, really. Um, it's an old university. It's called a Red Brick University in the UK. And it was established in 1874 as a science college and then in 1888 became uh, joined with the medical school and, and developed as a university. Um, we are a Russell Group University, which in the UK means that we're one of 24 universities which are specially selected because of their world-class research. And researchers from Russell Group universities, which includes Oxford, Cambridge, London, Edinburgh, Manchester, Leeds, etc. Um, are responsible for about two thirds of the world's, uh, you know, research. So we're actively produce world class uh, research. Um, I think that we're a, we're a quite a large university. We have about thirty eight thousand students. Uh, we have a lot of uh, postgraduate students as well. We, we supervise a lot of PhDs, um, and. We have a long history of working with Indonesia as a university. So um, we currently have, and I checked this out for this interview, 140 Indonesian students studying with us. And we have a network that's currently, and we have a network of a thousand Indonesian students as alumni. Um, and the business school have an active link, uh, an active group in Jakarta that are, are a very active alumni group. And uh, the University's Leeds has, has done joint publications with around 30 leading Indonesian universities. So we have about 150 research publications joint between the University of Leeds and varying universities um, in Indonesia. Um, we're, the University of Leeds is managed by their South Asian office, which is based in Malaysia. Um, so it, it's a well-established office in, in Southeast Asia uh, for connections. And then where I'm situated is the Faculty of Medicine and Health. Uh, we have seven faculties at the university and Medicine and Health is by far the largest. Um, so it comprises of four schools. We have Medicine, uh, which, you know, is, is obviously everything to do with medicine and the science uh, associated with medicine. Uh, we have dentistry, we have healthcare, where we train nurses, midwives, allied health professionals, and we have psychology, um, which covers a range of, of psychological uh, topic areas. This started, like I said, from having um, the first PhD student from UMS at the University of Leeds in healthcare, which was Vanami Yulian, who's now Dr. Vanami Yulian. And uh, so when Vanami came, she already realised that I had a relationship with Unissa University and suggested that I visit uh, UMS University and uh, to see if we could develop a similar collaboration because the uh, relationship with Unissa has been very successful. I contribute to the Masters of Midwifery programme there, I teach on that programme, and I've supervised PhD students from ANISSA. So we've developed quite an active um, uh, partnership. So in 2019, I visited uh, Indonesia, Java Island, and I went to ANISSA first, and then I came over to Surakarta to visit UMS. And 
Um, I must admit, I was very impressed with the university. It's a very large university, a uh, lovely campus. Um, I was w- really welcomed uh, on the campus. And so we started to just build that relationship as well. And I started by doing um, a research for publication workshop while I was there and a few other activities, um, introduced senior colleagues at your university to what leads up to offer and the PhD pathways that we can offer, um, and generally started to work uh, with health sciences to build that relationship, so to think about how we could build it uh, going forward. Um, since then, we've, done, uh, we've started doing things like guest lectures. So we've done, this year, we did a, a guest lecture uh, from our mental health team, which included your students and staff and our students. So we have that sort of bilateral working And we're also doing research projects. Vanam is on a research project that I'm doing around COVID and pregnancy in Indonesia. Um, And we're looking to develop the research as well as education. Um, So I think it's a very, it's it's really developed and even the pandemic has not dampened it down because we've communicated regularly. (laughs) Congratulations for (laughs) having a 63rd anniversary, which which is fantastic. Um, As I said, I've visited the university. It's a very vibrant university. It's very research orientated. Um, And I've done joint sessions with some of your uh, lecturers over there. Um, I think that um, what impressed me about UMS is is the size and the relationship that you have with other universities. So there's other universities, Mohammedia. It's It's a real network of universities and also hospitals and schools and nurseries you know you you're really well linked to the uh, the community around you uh, at Mohammedia um, and I can see that it's moving in the direction of being becoming one of the top research universities as well because of the investment that's happening with research and helping people to uh, develop PhDs get their PhD so that when they can go back they can then you know, start to supervise PhDs themselves. So that's the whole thing is that uh, eventually, you know, there will be a cohort, because I'm sure there are now, like Vanami who's just come through and our supervised winner, Shea Ambuati as well, who will be able to come back and really, uh, you know, focus on that research agenda. I think there's broad principles with international working. Um, The principles that I follow is that the relationship needs to be sustainable, So it's not just, you know, a memorandum of understanding is just a piece of paper. You know, we can all sign a piece of paper and, but the the universities need to have a, well, either the institutional level, you know, the schools have to have a match with another school at a different university or an institutional level match where it's the partnership is fruitful for both universities. And that sustainability, like um, at UNISA, they offered me initially a visiting professorship. That's kept that going because I'm a named person and I can work with that team. And similar now has happened at uh, UMS. And also, I think if you've got PhD students that have already you know, been at that university, like Vanami and Winnishe know leads very, very well. They know how it works and they can do that strategic matching as well. Um, and regular regular visits, regular activities need to be there so that, you know, the, the MOU doesn't just fall dormant and, and also it needs to be reviewed. So we've recently reviewed the and, and re-signed the um, uh, uh, MOU at UMS so that it's fresh and it's, it's really answering what the universities need, but also the challenges that we need to respond to worldwide. Uh, you know, particularly in a pandemic, more so we need to all work together globally to um, help improve um, health and well-being as well as other areas um, in the world. And we can only do that by having strong relationships that are based on trust, that are active and that are renewed regularly. (laughs) 